the other recorder going here. There we go. Get that down there. Okay. In this section, in this section, we're taking a look at trig functions, the unicircle approach. So let's talk about the unicircle. And I should have had one uh, handy here, but I'll Google Google one and try to find one in a second. Uh, first, let me uh, write down the unicircle, and I'll refer to the one I I get off of um, off Google because it'll be a lot nicer than than whatever I draw here. Now, unit means one. Um, unit circle means you got a circle of radius one. Um, so we got some points here. This right here is uh, zero degrees, or or in radians, it'd just be zero. Um, this point would be one zero, um, because the radius is one. Now this one is uh, ninety degrees. or that's the same as pi over 2 and if I look at this point this would be um, 0, 1. Well, let's look at this first quadrant first. We have our 45 degrees here now that's the same as uh, pi over 4 that'll be the square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 I don't draw these real well, but uh, we'll assume that's roughly in the right right position. Uh, I tend to think of uh, radians instead of degrees when I do this. Okay, so this would be 30 degrees, or pi over 6, and this one would be square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. And again, these are these are points. And then this one up here is 60 degrees. Now, when I say 60 degrees, going from my initial side here up to there, my terminal side, that's 60 degrees. And um, now, if you look at this, this is pi over six, pi over four, pi over three. And this one will be one half square root of three over two. We'll see how we come up with these values here in a minute. Um, basically, 30 degrees is this. Uh, 60 degrees is just the the, the points the, the x and y flipped flipped around. Um, now, by symmetry, this this uh, going up to here is pi over six. So we can uh, do the similar ones over here. So that's pi over 6. This is pi over 6 going the other direction. So that's negative pi over 6 going that way. So over to here would be 5 pi over 6. And uh, degrees. I'm not very good at degrees. Let me um, think that through. This has 180 degrees minus 30. Uh, that would be 150 degrees. Um, and w you're going to find symmetry here. This point, if I went straight across, would give me this point. And these are going to be the same values here, except for the signs will be different. Um, over here, the x value is negative. So I got square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Now this is pi over 4, and if I went straight over to here, this is going to give us 3 pi over 4. And let me think that through in degrees. 90 plus uh, 45, 135. Degrees. <clears throat> It'll be the same values as this here. I mean, this does go straight over, except for the signs will be different. We'll have negative square root of two over two and positive square root of two over two. And this one here, um, this is pi over three. This is uh, two pi over three. And let me think the degrees through. Um, okay, if that's thirty. This has to be thirty, so one hundred and twenty. And again, if I went straight over from this point, it would give me this point. So it's the same values, except for the signs is different. 
So this will be negative 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. Now this symmetry that we're seeing holds true throughout this entire circle. So once you've got one, qu one quadrant, it gives you all the rest. So again, I'll go straight down from here. That right there. Let me think degrees first. If this is 30 degrees, this has to be 30. So that's 180 plus uh, 30 gives me 180 plus 30, 210. Yeah. And um, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. And it's going to be the same values as this, except for the signs will be different. So we'll have negative square root of 3 over 2 and positive 1 half. The quarter marks are easy. They're just always square root of 2 over uh, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And again, if I went straight down from here, then it'll give me the same values as that. Now let me think through the degrees here. Okay, that's 180 plus 45, 225, 180 plus 40, yeah, 225. I personally think radians is easier because you can see it. Pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. And again, um, this is negative square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2. And then if I went straight down from this one, and give me this this point. And let me think the degrees through. Uh, this is 30 degrees here, so this is 30 degrees here. Uh, this is 270 to here, so 270 minus 30 gives us 240. Uh, there we go. And um, Let's see. This is pi over pi over six here. Um, actually, this is two pi over three, three pi over three, four pi over three. It's an easier way to think of it. Uh, except for I wrote that kind of sloppy, but that's four pi over three. Okay, and it'll be the same values as this one. Oops, except for the signs will be changed. So this will be negative one half and negative square root of three over two. Okay, four pi over three, and then I go straight over to here. That's going to be five pi over three. Um, let's think degrees. That's thirty. This is thirty. So this will be what three hundred. And 5 pi over 3. And again, it's going to be the same values, except for the signs will be different. So this will be a positive 1 half and negative square root of 3 over 2. You have to think what the sign is of x's and y's in that particular quadrant. I know x's are positive here and y's are negative. And then if I went straight over from this one, over to there. Pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, uh, 7 pi over 4. Let's try that again. Um, 5 pi over 4, 6, 7 pi over 4. I was just thinking I missed one right here. I'll go back to that. Okay, <clears throat> and um, oh, I hate degrees. Uh, 180, especially on a Saturday night. That's 45 degrees. So 360 minus 45, 315, I believe. And this will be uh, square root of two over two. The x is positive there, and y is negative. So negative square root of two over two. Now this right here is 270, 270 degrees. And that's um, six pi, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which reduces to 3 pi over 2. And point-wise, this would be uh, 0, negative 1. This one, well, I forgot that one too. That's 180 degrees. Forget the easy ones. Um, this is pi. 
5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, or pi. And this is negative 1, 0. And then our last one, if I went straight over from this one, we get this. And uh, this is um, pi over 6, so this is pi over 6. Um, now that, that would be 12 pi over 6, so this is 11 pi over 6 degrees. What would it be in degrees? Uh, that's 30, so this is 360 minus 3, 330 degrees. And um be the same as this. So I got um, square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. So again, you, there's a lot of symmetry you need to get comfortable with on this. But knowing the first quadrant is kind of the key. Well, let's look at how they get these points. And then we'll try to Google and find a good one. Um, so you have something that's uh, better to reference. Actually, and, um, that's what these say. Open, open. Uh, what's that say? Capture screen, insert image from file, add line, zoom in, zoom out. Let me go ahead and save this. Maybe. I redid my machine today. Uh, hello. There it goes. Boy, that's slow. I just need to throw it in the trash. Hmm. Well, let me save or create a temp. There we go. And uh, trig and um, I don't know what this is called. Unicircle approach or something like that. Uh, trig, trig functions, unicircle approach. Show trig functions, unit circle approach. Page zero 01. There we go. Just in case this causes this to blow up. And um, there we go. Yeah, I think I've ever used my new computer for about everything. So slow. I was pricing memory uh, to, up, to upgrade the memory on it. it. Came up two hundred forty dollars. It's like, well, that's insane. Memory's not much cheaper than it used to be. Okay, so let's. Um, I think that's a pretty good one. I think I've used that one. Threat has been detected. There's no threat. Go away. Well, maybe there is. <laughs> uh, copy that real quick. Uh, save picture as housewarmingproductions.ca. At least I didn't bring up a porn site in the middle of uh, creating this video. Okay. And go to documents. And uh, actually, C drive. And uh, temp. There we go. So let's go here. And. Um, Insert image from file. Let's see that. And um, go C temp. Mm 
Okay, I won't use that one. Okay. I mean, one of those nights, I think. It'd be better if I just went to bed. One website I picked to pull something off of is uh, <laughs> has some kind of okay. Yeah, let me pick this one. Let's see if it's a malicious site. I didn't look comf comforting there, but oh well. Okay, save picture as. And save as a bitmap. There we go. I'm not trying to save it that way. BMP, there. Okay, so then choose that. <laughs> That's why I went ahead and saved that first, just in case that was going to happen. Insert image from file. There we go. Too big, but um, you know, nothing's gonna work tonight, looks like. Oh well, <laughs> let's take a look at 45 degrees. Okay, so the four for the 45 degrees, I gotta use, I can't do that with the mouse. So for 45 degrees. Here it goes like this. And we create a triangle. That looks like this. Now this side is by default going to be 1 because that's the that's radius. And then this will be a um, 90 degree angle. So let's write that over here. Like that. Now this distance right here is if I go straight up from there that's my x part so this distance is my x part this distance here if I were to go straight over to there is my y part so this is our x and this is our y and uh, this is by default 45 degrees if that's 45 this is 90 this one has to be 45 because all of the angles have to add up to 180 degrees okay so let's take a look at this um, we, from geometry, um, if this is 45 and this is 45, then these are both the same. Um, so I can redo this triangle. Saying that's, let's say X, and that's just X. Uh, just because I know they're the same. And that's 45, and that's 45. Well, this one's pretty simple. Uh, this is the Pythagorean theorem. So this side squared, so X squared plus this side squared, x squared, equals this side squared. Um, well, that gives us 2x squared equals 1. Divide both sides by 2. We get x squared is equal to 1 half. Square root property. Uh, drop the squared. And normally we put a plus or minus around the other side, but distance is always um, uh, positive. So I'm just going to have square root And uh, we can't have a fraction inside of a square root, so we'll split it up, put a square root around top, and square root around the bottom. But we can't, um, actually, square root run one simplifies. 
but we can't have a square root downstairs. To get rid of that, we multiply it by the same, this is square root of 2, so we multiply by square, square root of 2. And whatever we multiply by the bottom, we have to multiply by the top. So we get square root of 2 over 2. And since the, this side is the same as this, then that's why in our unit circle, this is square root of 2 and that's square root of 2 or square root of 2 over 2 and that's square root of 2 over 2. Well, let's take a look at the 60 degree one. Let me save this because I'm sure when I paste that in again it'll... I thought I was going to have like some kind of super machine. I spent most of the day rebuilding a silly computer. Um, doing the recovery, wiping off everything that was on the um, hard drive. And I'll quit whining here. Shouldn't whine more than two hours, I I wouldn't think. Okay. And we paste in. Picture again. Okay. Now let's look at the 60 degree. Okay, so we got the... Oops. That's supposed to be a straight line on that line, but um, and then it goes straight down from there. And I obviously can't draw a straight line tonight, like that. Well, this this angle here is 60 degrees. Uh, since this is the radius, that that side will be one. So let's draw that over here. This is one. And this would be 60 degrees. And um, this side right here is going to be our x. And this side right here will be our y. And we're trying to see how do they get these x values and y values here. Well, on this one, if this is 60, then this is going to be 30. And um, I'm going to um, draw another triangle right beside this. By symmetry, it's going to be this exact, just flipped flipped over. So this will be 60 degrees, and then this would be 30 degrees. If this side's 1, then this side has to be 1. Um, now, this is 60, that's 60. 30 plus 30 is 60, so that side is 60, which means this entire side here is a distance of, uh, of 1. And specifically, actually, let me write that. A distance is 1. And if this uh, this piece here is the same distance as this piece, then this will be one half, and this will be one half. Well, there's our x. That's how we get to one half. Well, the one we're missing is this one right here, the y. Um, and we're going to use a Pythagorean theorem for that. So I got this side squared, y squared, plus this side squared. So the one half squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. The one squared. Well, we got uh, y squared plus one fourth equals one. Take the one fourth over to the right side, so we get one minus one fourth. We get y squared is equal to. This is a mixed number. Remember, we put the negative up on top, so that's one times four, which is four plus the negative one, which gives us three fourths. Drop the squared. Normally we put a plus or minus, since, but we're dealing with distance. Um, so uh, we're just going to have a positive. Square root of 3 over 4. But we can't have a um, fraction inside of a radical. So we split it up, put a square root around the top and square root around the bottom. And this one works out nice because square root of 4 gives you 2. And we get y is equal to square root of 3 over 2. Which is that right there. Now I'm not going to do the 30 degrees and I'll show the reason why. Uh, take a look at that triangle. Uh, this is this is 60 and this is 30 degrees up here. Let me do in blue um, the 30. Okay, come over here, draw a line straight down, go over like this. This, by default, is 30. If that's 90, this has to be 60. 
it's the same triangle. Um, so um, it's just um, arranged differently, which means it'll give me the same values except for they'll be flipped around. Since this is 30 and that's 60 and this is 60 and this is 30, see how they're flipped around here? Square root of 3 over 2 and um, uh, 1 over 2. Uh, so anyway, that's how you get these um, in your first quadrant. And then by default, uh, by symmetry, as I go over here, that all these will be the same except for the signs will be different. In the first quadrant, x and y are positive. In this second quadrant, the x is negative, the y is positive. In third quadrant, both x and y are negative. In our fourth quadrant, x is positive and y is negative. Well, let's take a look at some problems now. We've gone over the unit circle. And I'll save that. Slow. Yeah, I got to look at the prices of new computers um, that had a uh, 10 gig uh, a RAM, and um, it'll be beneficial for me just to save up for one of those instead of um, instead of up upgrading this. Okay. First problem. We got some formulas we're going to use for this. And this is if your point x, y is on the unit circle. These formulas only work if that's true. And um, I'm going to refer to the angle um, of what we're what we're looking at, and I'll I'll just call them um, data, I guess. A lot of books use T, but my T's don't come out looking very good. Cosine is going to equal to X. Sine of theta is going to equal to Y. So if we were actually looking at that unicircle, our X and Y values, if it asked to find cosine of 30 degrees, then we go to 30 degrees and we had jot down the, the X part. Tangent, tangent theta is equal to Y over X. Secant theta is equal to 1 over x. Uh, co cosine and secant are uh, inverses of each other, uh, reciprocals. And sine and cosecant theta are also, so this would be 1 over y. And ta tangent and cotangent are also, so this would be x over y. So let's use these formulas for our first problem. There it is. Okay. Uh, P equals XY is the point on the unit circle that corresponds to a real number T. Find the exact values of the six trig functions of T. And they do want us to use T, so I guess I'll. I like theta, but. Now, to say this is a point on the unit circle means if I were to plug in the x and the y into this formula, x squared plus y squared, that's going to give us 1. Um, this is a circle of radius, radius 1. We don't have to verify that to tell us that. Now this is our x and this is our y. So let's uh, find cosine. Cosine is equal to x, which is equal to negative 1 fourth. Secant. That's 1 over x, and you could use that formula if you want, but um, basically you just take um, the reciprocal of this. Uh, reciprocal is fraction flipped, so secant would be 4 over negative 1, or just negative 4. Sine is equal to y, which in this problem is square root of 15 over 4, and cosecant just take the reciprocal of that, so that'd be 4 over square root of 15. Now we can't have a square root downstairs like that, so what we do is we multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 15.
And when we do that, top just becomes 4 square root of 15. And the bottom, square root of 15 times square root of 15 gives you 15. Okay. And then tangent. Tangent theta is equal to y over x. Uh, y was square root of 15 over 4. And x is negative 1 fourth. Now, when you got a single fraction um, up on top and a single fraction down here, and they have the same denominator, the 4 is going to cancel always. So we've got square root of 15 over negative 1, or just negative square root of 15. Now, cotangent is this flipped, and but you have to pick the appropriate place to flip it, um, the reciprocal. Um, if I pick this, that'll be hard. This will be hard. This one's perfect. Square root of 15 over negative 1. So this will be negative 1 over square root of 15. Now we can't have a uh, square root downstairs. So we'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 15. So that gives us negative square root of 15 over 15 for our answer. So those are our six trig functions uh, for that particular one. Let's take a look at another one like that. Okay. We got um, negative 2 square root of 2. Big question is whether this video is going to last or it's going to cause my computer to run out of memory. And negative one third. Of course, this is my x and this is my y. Same instructions. So cosine. Cosine of, uh, I'll use t since they're wanting it. Um, cosine is equal to x from our formulas up above, which is negative 2 square root of 2 over 3. And while we're while we're on cosine, let's go ahead and do secant. Secant is the reciprocal of that. So it'd be three over negative two square root of two. Now we can't have a square root of two downstairs, so we'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of two. So we got three times square root of two and negative two square root of two times square root of two. Which gives us three square root of two over negative two and square root of two times square root of two is two. So that gives us, I'll put negative up on top, negative 3 square root of 2 over 4. Sine is equal to our y. So sine is equal to negative 1 third. Cosecant is uh, reciprocal of that. Um, so this would be 3 over negative 1, which would give us negative 3. Now tangent is equal to y over x. y was negative one-third over x, which is negative two square root of two over three. Now notice we have a single fraction over a single fraction. Both of them have a denominator of three, so I can, I can drop the threes. And negative divided by negative is positive, so I can drop the negatives. So this is one over two square root of two. I uh, can't have a square root downstairs, so I multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. So I got 1 times square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 times square root of 2, which gives us square root of 2 over, um, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, and 2 times 2 gives us 4. Cotangent. Ah, not theta, t. Uh, cotangent is uh, tangent flipped, the reciprocal of it. And again, you want to pick the appropriate place. Um, if I pick this one, that wouldn't be any good because the, the square root would be downst downstairs. This one's perfect. 1 over 2 square root of 2. So this would be 2 square root of 2 over 1, which is just 2 square root of 2. And that'd be your answer. Let me save that. There we go. Four. Time.
time for my tablet to blow up. So let me close that. Bring up a fresh one. Now, um, I'm going to also bring up um, the unit circle, if it'll come up. Yeah, let me do that one. There we go. And even make that a little bit bigger, I guess. Set it important at each time. There we go. Now this next one is going to be an uh, angle that's not on our unit circle. You don't see how to handle that. So we got sine of 15 pi. Well, nowhere on our unit circle is 15 pi. Excuse me. Now, all the way around our unit circle is 2 pi. And then if, uh, if I'm st sitting right here at pi over 6, if I go all the way around back to pi over 6, that's another 2 pi. So each time I go around my unit circle, it's another 2 pi. Now, I can uh, add 2 pi over and over, or I can subtract 2 pi over and over. So what we're wanting to do with this one is we want to keep subtracting 2 pi until it's in our unit circle. So I got sine of 15 pi minus 2 pi, which gives us 13 pi. And uh, that's still not in our unit circle, so I'll subtract another 2 pi. So I got 13 pi minus 2 pi, which is 11 pi. Still not there. I'll keep subtracting. So that becomes 9 pi, 7 pi, 5 pi, um, 3 pi, and finally, pi. Well, remember what our formula was. Sine is our y. So if I come over here, I want to go to where pi is. Pi is uh, right here. And sine is our y part of the point. Um, so our point is negative 1, 0, and our y part is 0. Which means this would equal to 0. Now this is tedious to sit there and keep subtracting 2 pi over and over. You can actually subtract multiples of 2 pi. You know, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi. So right to begin with on this one, I'm just, I was just showing this to demonstrate the concept. I would have subtracted 14 pi uh, to begin with, to take it down to, down to this. Okay, let's look at our next one. We've got cotangent 9 pi over 2. Now, um, on this one, if I, I'm going to think what this is, um, cotangent of 9 pi over 2, that's 4 and a half pi. Well, 4 and a half pi is not in our unit circle. Um, the highest in our unit circle is 2 pi. You know, as we go around here, 2 pi is our highest one on our unit circle. So I'm going to subtract 2 pi's. And basically, it's easiest to subtract multiples of 2 pi's without going through all the the rigmarole we did in the last problem. So I got 4.5 pi minus 4 pi, which gives me cotangent of pi over 2. We're left with 1 half pi. Um, well, one pi over 2 is on our unit circle. It's uh, right at our 90 degree mark, right here. Now, uh, remember, Tangent is y over x, and cotangent is x over y. So here we are at pi over 2, and we're going to put x over y. So this is our x, and this is our y. Our point is 0, 1. So we'll have 0 over 1, which gives us 0. Now, they don't all equal 0, in case you're wondering. But 
again, we look up the angle and then we use the formulas. Um, you know, here I didn't write down, but remember, sine is y. So we took the y part of the point at pi. Let's look at another one. Okay, so we got secant of negative 5 pi. Well, obviously we don't have negative 5 pi on our unit circle. We only have positive values. So I need to add 2 pi's over and over. And I don't want to keep doing that. Uh, you know, if I added 2 pi, it would still be negative. 4 pi, it would still be negative. 6 pi. Remember, we're, mul we're adding multiples of 2 pi. So I'm going to take secant negative 5 pi plus 6 pi and uh, that's going to give us pi. We're going to talk more about uh, what does that mean? Why can you add 2 pi over and over? In s in s a couple of trig functions you can just add pi. Um, we're going to talk about that when we get to the graph, graphing part. Now um, pi, that's on our unit circles right here. The point is negative 1, 0. Now recall Cosine is equal to x, secant is 1 over x. So our x value at pi is equal to negative 1. So we're going to plug negative 1 in for the x. So we've got 1 divided by negative 1, which gives us negative 1. And that's our answer. Um, let's take a look at the next one. These ca these are just revolved around trying to get you comfortable with using looking things up in a unit circle. So we got secant 45 degrees. Maybe there it goes. Sine 60. Now remember. Um, Secant is tied to cosine. Cosine is x, so this is going to be 1 over x. And uh, sine is y. So let's look 45 degrees up in our unit circle. 45 degrees is right here. And we're looking up, uh, we're, secant will be 1 over x, so we got 1 over something. So let's look up the x value at 45 degrees. It's square root of 2 over 2. The x part is right here, so yeah, square root of 2 over 2. Now for our, our sine 60 degrees, we're looking for the y. So let's go to 60 degrees, which is right here. And we want sine, which is the y part, which is square root of 3 over 2. Now, if you got a, um, a fraction down the denominator, you can always take the reciprocal of it and multiply it times the top part. Uh, flip it and multiply it times the top part. So we've got 1 times 2 over square root of 2 times square root of 3 over 2. Now, the 1 doesn't do anything. Uh, multiply these together, the 2 is going to cancel. And we got square root of 3 over square root of 2. Well, we can't have a square root downstairs, so I'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. The reason you do that is when the square roots are the same and you multiply them together, the radical just disappears. On top, that gives a square root of 6, and down below, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So this would be our answer. And let's look at our next problem. Okay, so um, we got five secant pi over six plus <coughs> cotangent five pi over four. This first um refresh our memory on what these are equal to. Secant is tied to cosine. Cosine is x, so this is 1 over x. 
Um, cotangent is tied to tangent. Tangent is y over x, so this one's going to be x over y. Now the 5 just uh, stays out in front here. And uh, so we'll have 1 over something. Well, let's, let's go look up pi over 6 and see what the x uh, part of that point is. So pi over 6, right here, and the x part of that point is square root of 3 over 2. So we'll put square root of 3 over 2. Now 5 pi over 4. Let's go look that up and find what the x and y value is. Uh, 5 pi over 4 is right here, and both x and y are negative square root of 2 over 2. So this will be a negative square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2. Now remember what I said in the last problem. If you have a single fraction downstairs, you can flip it multiply times the top part. So this becomes 5 times 2 over square root of 3. And uh, since those are the same, that just gives us 1. So that gives us 10 square root of 3 plus 1. Typically, simplified form means to get a single fraction. Um, so I'm going to rewrite the 1 as 1 over 1. Common denominator would be square root of 3. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3 here. Why didn't I get rid of, this, rid of that square root of 3 first? I'm not sure if it would been any easier. So then we get 10 plus square root of 3 over 3, like, or square root square root of 3, sorry. But we can't have the square root of 3 downstairs, so we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. I probably took a little little longer route on that one. I'll blame it on my, my computer memory, on my computer. Um, so square root of 3 times 10 gives us 10 square root of 3, and square root of 3 times square root of 3 gives us 3. And we multiply those together, that just gives us 3. So that would be our answer. Uh, let's see, if I had multiplied top and bottom by square root of 3 here, I'd got 10 square root of 3 over 3. Um, eh, it would have took uh, maybe one, one or two steps off. Oh well. Let's see what the next problem's uh, asking for. Find the exact values of the six trick functions of the given angle. So we're using the same formulas. Uh, what is this? Number 8. And we got 7 pi over 6. So what they're asking us to find is they're wanting us to find 7, uh, or assign 7 pi over 6. <coughs> now remember, um, sine is our y. So if we look on our unit circle, uh, 7 pi over 6 is right here. Sine is our y, which is negative 1 half. At some point, you should feel comfortable with um, not having to look on your unit circle on that. Cosine is our x, which in that quadrant is negative. And if this is 1 half, then you know it's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Um, the x part right there. Tangent. Tangent of 7 pi over 6 is y over x. Well, y we said was negative 1 half and x is negative square root of 3 over 2. Now again, um, if you got a single fraction over a single fraction and the denominator is the same, you can drop them and the negatives will cancel. So we have 1 over square root of 3. Multiply top and bottom by a square root of 3. Can't have a square root downstairs. And we end up with square root of 3 over 3. Okay, now um, sine is related to cosecant, the reciprocal of it. So if this is negative 1 half, then this will be 2 over negative 1, or just negative 2. Cosine goes right along with secant. 
So we're going to take a reciprocal of this, negative square root of 3 over 2. So we've got 2 over negative square root of 3. And we can't have a square root downstairs. We'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. You'll get to the point eventually you'll do that so much it'll be common. And I'll put negative up on top. So we've got negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. Now our cotangent of the angle is tangent flipped. And you want to pick the appropriate place. Uh, this one right here would be a good one. 1 over square root of 3. So this would be square root of 3 over 1, which is just square root of 3. And those are our six answers for that. <clears throat> Let me save that page. Let's look at the next problem. Find the exact values of the six trig functions of the given angle. So 420 degrees. Well, 420 degrees isn't on our unit circle. If I go and look, uh, it goes up to 360 degrees. So, but remember, um, before where we added or subtracted 2 pi, you can add or subtract 360 degrees. So we're going to begin off, begin this problem by subtracting 360 to put it into our unit circle. So that gives us 60 degrees, and that's one we're going to work with. Um, let's see. A lot of times books start with um, sine. Um, to me, x is logical because uh, x alphabetically, um, x and then y. Remember, uh, cosine is our x, and if I look at 60 degrees, x is 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and do secant while I'm at it. Remember, cosine and secant go hand in hand. I take a reciprocal of that, which would be 2 over 1 or 2. Again, I gave you formulas for secant, cosecant, cotangent, but you don't have to use them. It's a lot easier to do them this way. Uh, but in some some problems, you may have to do them. That's why I gave them to you. Remember, sine is y, which if I look at 60 degrees, is square root of 3 over 2. Um, here's our y, square root of 3 over 2. And cosecant, and I'm writing 60 degrees down here, but again, it's the same as 420. Uh, so cool secant of 60 degrees um, would be this flipped. So it would be 2 over square root of 3. Can't have a radical downstairs, so multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. And that gives us 2 square root of 3 over 3. Eventually I'll quit showing that step, but at least for this, this section I'll probably be good about it. Okay, tangent. Remember tangent is equal to y over x. Well, y was square, uh, square root of 3 over 2, and x is 1 half. So we got a square root of 3 over 2 all over 1 half. And again, if you got a single fraction equal to a single fraction, denominator is the same, you can cancel those twos. So we got square root of 3 over 1, which gives us square root of 3. For cotangent, cotangent is this flipped, and I want to pick the appropriate place. There's no real good one. I'll pick this square root of 3 over 1, so this becomes 1 over square root of 3. Can't have a radical downstairs, so I'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. And we get square root of 3 over 3 as our answer. Oops. Let's look at our next problem. Um, same type. Except for it's in radians. So far, I have not had memory problems. So this is good. Probably wait right to the almost to the end when I'm just about done. And then it'll crash. That'll be my luck. 
What we got? Negative 8 pi over 3. They want the uh, same instructions. Well, this is obviously not in our unit circle. You know, if I go and look here, I don't see negative 8 pi over 3. So I want to uh, keep adding 2 pi over and over to get there. Now, 2 pi, if I, if I put it with the uh, same denominator as this, because I want to have a common denominator, um, multiply bottom part by 3, multiply top part by 3, that would give me 6 pi over 3. So that's what we're going to add. So I got negative 8 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we're just adding 2 pi, aren't we? And that gives us negative 2 pi over 3. Still not in our unit circle, but again, I can keep adding 2 pi. So I'll add 6 pi over 3 again, which gives us 4 pi over 3, which is in our unit circle. So 4 pi, 4 pi over 3 is right here. I guess I better scroll down. So that's one we're working with, uh, this one. Now, I'm going to write these in terms of 4 pi over 3, but really that's the same as this right here. So we got our cosine of 4 pi over 3. And remember, cosine is our x. So cosine of 4 pi over 3, here's 4 pi over 3, x is negative 1 half. And secant is that flipped, so that become uh, 2 over negative 1 or negative 2. Now sine of 4 pi over 3 is our y part, and again, you should start feeling comfortable with these. Um, you know, that this is 1 half, this has to be square root of 3 over 2. The only thing you should have to think about is what your sign is. Um, but anyway, I'll look it up. Uh, 4 pi over 3 is, again, down here. We look up our y, which is negative square root of 3 over 2. Now, cosecant goes right along with sine. And it's going to be that flipped, so it'll be 2 over negative square root of 3. And uh, again, we can't have a square root downstairs, so we'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. And uh, I'll put the negative up on top. So we got negative 2 square root of 3, and square root of 3 times square root of 3 gives us 3. Okay, tangent. Yeah, remember, tangent is y over x. Well, if this is our y and this is our x, I don't need to flip back to the unit circle. So that would be negative square root of 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. We've seen this a few times already. So um, single fraction over single fraction, the denominator is the same. They can cancel. The negatives can cancel. And we end up with square root of 3 over 1 or square root of 3. Cotangent will be that flipped. And doesn't matter which one you pick, but you pick whichever one's easiest. This is probably the easiest, square root of 3 over 1. So this becomes 1 over square root of 3. Get rid of the square root downstairs, multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. And we get square root of 3 over 3 is our answer. Let me see. Take a look at the next problem. I think it's a calculator one. So, yeah, it is. So, we got um, cosine of um, 37 degrees. And uh, it wants us to round it two decimal places using the calculator. Okay, well, let's go to our calculator. First thing we want to do is we want to go to mode. And uh, if you see the third one down here, you'll flip back and forth on these in quite a bit. See how mine shows radians now? I'm going to down arrow to that row, and then right arrow and put my flashing cursor on degree, and I'll press enter one time. Then I'll exit out, do a second mode. And um, doing co cosine 37 degrees. 
So I press my cosine button, and I'll put in 37, and enter. And two decimal places, uh, it'd be 0 0.79, I round up, so I'd be 0 0.80 or just 0 0.8. So that would be our answer. Now the next one, we're going to introduce some new formulas on. They're, good, they're related to what we've already been doing. You see we got cosecant to 53 degrees. Now we've already talked about how um, sine and cosecant are related, cosine and secant and so forth. So let me kind of summarize that. Um, secant of an angle is equal to 1 over cosine. That says the reciprocal, what we have been indicating. Um, cosecant is equal to 1 over sine. And cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent. Why do you need that for this this problem? If we look in our calculator, there is no cosecant. They never they never put it on the calculator. The reason why is because of that this relationship right here. So we're going to rewrite this as 1 over sine of 53 degrees. And that's how we'll put it into our calculator. So let's go over here. And I'll do 1 divided by sine of 53, enter. And in two decimal places, we get 1.25. And that's our answer. And let's look at our last calculator one. Got cotangent. of 7 pi over 12. Well, for, um, for one thing, it's cotangent. We don't have that on our calculator, so we have to use these uh, formulas here. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over tangent of 7 pi over 12. Now specifically, this angle here is in radians. You don't see a little degree mark, do you? So let's flip our calculator back to radians. So I'm press mode and uh, down arrow to that row and press enter on radians. And then I'll do a second mode to exit out. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 divided by tangent of um, 7 pi over 12. So 7 second caret divided by 12. Close parentheses enter. And we get negative to two decimal places. We round up negative 0.27. And that'd be your answer. Uh, let me say this and then we'll look at some new formulas, which these last three use. Take a drink while I'm at it. click it or not. Oh, there it goes. Sometimes you wonder when it never comes up. Okay. And time for it to blow up, so let me close that and start a new one. Actually, I can close the calculator because we're done with that now, too. Now, um, given a point x, y, not on a unit circle. So given a point not on a unit circle, 
Um, we have a formula for our um, radius. You know, if I looked at it here, radi the radius is no longer 1, and we got our x and we got our y here. From a Pythagorean theorem, we'd have r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now that um, that's officially the formula that you'll see in books and so forth. A better way for you to think of it is um, r is going to equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. This is the one that'll be the most beneficial um, because you're going to solve for you're going to need to solve for r. Okay, so um, I'll put a note here. R is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Then um, cosine of our angle is going to equal to, um, and a lot of times they'll put t here in books. I don't like t, so uh, this is x over r sine is equal to y over r and tangent is equal to y over x. Now you should already know what the others are from, from what we've already discussed. Secant is r over x. Cosecant is r over y. And cotangent is equal to x over y. So we're going to use these formulas in these, in these next problems. Okay, so we got negative twelve and negative five. It says a point on the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position is given. Find the exact value of each of the six trig functions of theta. Well this is our x and this is our y. First we need to find r. Well remember r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. So I got uh, negative 12 squared plus negative 5 squared, which gives us square root of uh, 144 plus 25, which gives us 169. And uh, 169 is 13 times 13. So we get r is equal to 13. Then second, we need to use those formulas we just wrote down. Cosine theta is equal to x over r. So x was uh, negative 12, and r we just said was 13. Remember, secant goes right along with uh, cosine, so it's a reciprocal of that. So we'd have 13 over negative 12. Um, sine is equal to y over r. y we said was negative 5 and r we said was 13. Cosecant goes right along with sine, so it's flipped, so it'll be 13 over negative 5. And tangent is equal to y over x. y was negative 5, x is uh, negative 12. Negatives cancel and I got 5 twelfths. Cotangent is uh, tangent flipped, so it'll be uh, 12 fifths. And those would be your answers for that one. Now that one uh, was designed to come out nice. Let's take a look at one that doesn't come out so nice. Actually, the next two don't come out so nice. Um, negative 3 and 5. Well, again, first thing we need to do is find r. This is x and this is y. So r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we're going to have negative 3 squared plus 5 squared, which is 9 plus 25, which gives us square root of 34. Okay. Now cosine of theta is, again, x over r. x we said was negative 3, and r is square root of 34. Now, I won't show these steps anymore. I think you, hopefully you got those down. 
Um, but we can't have a square root downstairs, so we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 34. So this gives us negative 3 square root of 34 over 34. Now secant will be cosine flipped. You want to pick the appropriate one, not this one, because that will put a square root downstairs. This fraction is good, negative 3 over square root of 34. So this will be square root of 34 over negative 3. Now sine is equal to y over r. y was 5, and r is square root of 34. Again, we can't have the square root downstairs, so we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 34. So we get 5 square root of 34 over 34. And, uh, and cosecant. Cosecant is sine flipped. I'll pick the appropriate one. This fr fraction right here is good. 5 over square root of 34. So this would be square root of 34 over 5. Tangent. Tangent is equal to y over x. Uh, y was 5. x was negative 3. Uh, tangent, or tangent, cotangent will be tangent flipped, which would be negative 3 over 5. And those are our six answers. Let me save that page, and then we got our last problem. And I think this is going to make it without blowing up on me, so I'm, I'm very happy. Um, the way my pen was acting kind of sluggish, um, I didn't think it was going to actually uh, work, <laughs> but... Watch me have this all done, have it all uploaded to YouTube, and then find out that the sound uh, didn't work or some some bizarre thing. Oops. Okay, so let's look at our last problem. Same type. We just got fractions now here instead. Okay, so we got um, one fifth and negative two thirds. Well, this is our x and this is our y. Uh, first thing, we need to find r. r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. That'd be the square root of one fifth of second power plus negative two thirds of second power. which would give us 1 over 25 plus 4 over 9. Now I want to get a, a common denominator, so I'll multiply 25 times 9, and um, I think that's 225. Let's see if that's right. 5, 4, 18, yeah. Okay, so I multiply the bottom part by 9 here. I multiply the top part by 9. So that gives me 9 over 225. Here I multiply the bottom part by 25. I multiply the top part by 25. So that gives me 100. Which then gives me... Now I made these numbers up, so... If you're wondering why they come out so hideous. <laughs> gives us that. Okay. Now, I can't have a um, square or fraction inside of a square root, so I'll split it up. I don't think 109 breaks down. Uh, we'll pretend it doesn't. Uh, 225. That's uh, 25 times 5. So, no, it's not times 5. Uh, times 9. Ah, it does come out nice. I guess, is it 15 times 15? Uh, something I should know, I guess. Uh, 0, 1, 5. Ah, sure enough. Okay. So it becomes square root of 109, and pair of 5s comes out, pair of 3s comes out, and 5 times 3 gives you a 15. So that's our R. That's kind of hideous. Um, okay. Cosine. Cosine is x over r. Well, x was one fifth, and this is um, square root of 109 over 15. Well, um, if you got a single a single fraction on top, single fraction on the bottom, 
you can uh, take the reciprocal of the bottom, flip it, and multiply it times your top part. So we got one fifth times 15 over um, square root of 109. Now 5 and 15 reduce. Um, that gives me a 3 on top over square root of 109. Can't have a square root downstairs, so multiply top and bottom by square root of 109. And we got 3 square root of 109 over 109 for cosine. Secant is a lot easier. You just have to pick the appropriate fraction to flip. Because uh, remember, secant is tied to cosine, and I want to pick this one right here. Um, so this would be square root of 109 over 3. Okay. Sine. Sine is equal to y over r. Um, what was y? Y was negative 2 thirds. And R was square root of 109 over 15. Okay. And again, same idea. You can take the fraction downstairs, flip it, and multiply it times the top part. So we got negative 2 thirds times 15 over square root of 109. 3 and 15, both divisible by 3, gives me 1. Uh, that gives me 5. So we end up with negative 10 over square root of 109. Multiply top and bottom by the square root of 109. We got negative 10 square root of 109 over 109. Cosecant. Cosecant is sine flipped. You just had to pick the appropriate place. And this is the easiest one right here. So this would be square root of 109 over negative 10. You want to pick the one that doesn't give you a, a radical down the denominator. Let me grab a drink. There you go. Okay, so now let's find tangent. Tangent should be easier in theory. It's y over x. And instead of scrolling up, I'll go over here. y was negative 2 thirds. And x is 1 fifth. Again, if you have a single, fra single fraction downstairs, you can flip it and multiply times your, multiply times your top part. So we got negative 2 thirds times 5 over 1, which gives us negative 10 over 3. And cotangent will be tangent flipped. So I'll flip the last fraction here, and we have 3 over negative 10. And those are our answers. So let me save that, and then we'll be done. So slow. There we go, and uh, stop the recorder. Stop the other recorder.